Hey guys, welcome back. Fast Monty's Garage, episode three of our Rick's Tank install with a Camaro, Gen 5 Camaro, LS3 pump. Yeah, pretty awesome. Why is that so awesome? Well, I covered the whole detail, the wiring harness, the AN hose line plumbing in episode one. So go check that out when you can. But in summary, this is a currently produced pump. So the reliability is really high. Number two, you can run down to one gallon of fuel in your tank, where competitive products require half a tank to keep enough fuel around that pump so you don't ingest any air. Yeah, half a tank. <laughs> Number three, no return line. You just have one line coming out of here. That's pretty neat. And number four, corner pickups. That's right. I elected to get corner pickups, which is why I went with this Resto Mod tank from Rick's. And I did all that summary in episode one. Episode two, we put the tank in, we dry fired the pump, make sure all our wiring was good. And then when I went to put my exhaust in, it didn't fit. It actually hit the sides of the tank. So it, most of episode two was me cutting the corners of the tank out and welding in these patch panels. Yeah, it's a ton of work. So go check that out if you're interested in how to do that. So now we're here in episode three. I painted them. I didn't, you know, record that. It's, it's okay. But today we need to cover a couple other important things before we put the tank in. And that's how to utilize these vents. There's, there's actually four vents that I'll go through in detail. After we put the tank in, we'll go ahead and test the sending unit. The stand, sending unit standalone is supposed to be more accurate than the old school floating type. So we'll put a gallon of gas in the tank at a time and I'll monitor my 50 year old gauge to see where it is. Cause then I'll have a really good understanding of, okay, what does empty really mean? Do I still have 50 miles or do I have 50 feet? <laughs> yeah, pretty critical. Then obviously we'll do the plumbing under the car for the vents. And then lastly, we get to go on a test drive. I've been dying. I haven't been driven the car in weeks because of this project. So if you haven't, subscribe. We have many more videos and subjects to cover in the future as well as car shows. But let's get into this. Let me show you the details of the vents. Here are the vents we were talking about. So last episode, we had the corners removed, right? When we were welding in those patch panels and I videoed where these go. So this half inch tube ends pretty short as you can see there. Uh, the one closest to the side of the tank is about six inches long and that little tiny one goes runs all the way to the front of the tank because there's another chamber up there. Now when we go to plumb these the 5 16th sides which is on the corner is, there's a matching one on the driver's side. We're going to tee those off because I found something online. This is actually a rollover valve. So you mount it straight up and down like that. And this is also 5 16 So we can actually tee off these two um, vents into someplace higher. And that's something to keep in mind here, guys, is that you need to vent these or put hoses on them and run them higher up in your car because this outlet needs to be higher than your fill tube. So if the, say the fill tube is gets to about that height, when you're filling up with fuel and these are not um, plumbed correctly, fuel will just come out the back of the tank. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Or if you're, say you're stopping hard, this big valve right here, fuel will slosh up against that and go in that tube. And that's another good point to keep in mind is when we plumb this, so here's a, here's a 5 16 inch hose. You don't want the hose to dip. So you don't want to dip like that because this will act like a trap in your sink. Fuel will get in here and then we'll start outgassing out the top or you'll have fuel um, pressure build up like when you're putting fuel in the tank or when the fuel gets hot, it will expand and push this fuel out if it's trapped in here. So when we plumb it, we wanna make sure there is no dip in the hose. The dip is higher or any bends are higher than that point. So any fuel that gets pushed up here will go back into the tank. 
Yeah, that's pretty critical. So on my old tank, I only had one vent in the back and I ran it up to the top of the frame above my rear tire. It worked out great. I didn't smell any fumes. There was also a vent in the front of the tank. And this one doesn't have the front. This is the front vent here. So we're gonna get creative once we get into the car, but that's why venting exists because of left to right sloshing. We have that issue going on. That's why these, uh, this front one exists on each side for left to right. And then front to rear is basically these two and filling and typical outgassing of when the fuel gets hot. You don't want any uh, back pressure to build up. Now, I'm gonna put everything back together. We'll get this under the car and plumb this up, and then I'll show you that trick for plumbing just in case we need to drain our tank. Okay, guys, so I was installing the, uh, or reinstalling, I should say, the sending unit, and one of you guys mentioned in the first video I should test this first, so that's what I did. Also, in the first video, I we looked at this in the tank because I filmed inside the tank and this is really close to the bottom. So I picked a halfway point and I put it in a bucket of water and we already have the wire harness hooked up. So I turned on the car, keyed on, gauge said one half. How cool is that? So that's pretty reassuring. All right, I'm gonna finish what I'm doing, get this in the car. Oh yeah, that cutout work great. I got room everywhere. I can go to three inch exhaust and, and even bigger if I really wanted to get crazy, but I don't need to. Now let's talk about the vents. So the vents are three on this side, which is the most difficult side. This rear one over here is five sixteenths ID. This is half inch ID and then quarter. They all run up over the frame. So the lowest point of the hose before the crest is right here. So all the, if any fuel should get in the line, it should not get up over the frame hump. And I have two of the lines coming out on the front side. So they go up and over the wheel well frame. And I'm gonna cut these to length and secure them. But this bad boy right here is the most difficult one that is pressed in there. But I know it works because I was able to blow in the, blow in the end, it works just fine. So I'll cut those to length and I'll secure uh, the little one. I don't have to secure the, the chubby one because uh, that ain't moving. <laughs> the other reason I want it right here is if I should ever get like a fuel leak smell, this is a great way to see if it's coming out one of these hoses. Uh, the one blind one is the quarter inch. It actually truncates at the top, up by the top of the shock, just because that's as, it's as much line as I had available. So it worked out. So that's why I have it here. So I can do a visual if I smell fuel. Um, but anyway, let's go to the plumbing trick we need to do to drain your tank or flush your tank. Okay, here's another reason why I love AN fitting so much. I was able to add a little T adapter, lickety split, it's an a 6 AN obviously female end here, two male ends, and this is a cap, this is a 6 AN cap. So it's obviously temporary. If I need to flush the system, I can remove this cap. But we can't just do this raw. Let me go to the workbench and show you the adapter to put on here when you go to flush your tank. Here's an example of the T that I have in the car. This is obviously not it, but if you're gonna do this in your car, the way you have to think about it is the fuel line from the pump to your throttle body or fuel rail is under pressure. And the pump wants to see that pressure in order for it to behave correctly. So if you take this cap off and just leave it open like that, there will be no pressure. And the pump will run too fast and it will burn itself out. This is not uh, according to Mike. This is actually according to vaporworks.com. I found it on their website, this idea as well. So what we're going to do is we need to add some sort of resistance on that teed or where I have the cap. So let's say I take the cap off. I found a female AN fitting with a threaded 1 8 NPT. And what I'm going to do is take this uh, auto meter set. This is for their gauges, right? Remember we did the whole full gauge install. There's an adapter right here, which we can put on the 1 8 MPT size and add a smaller tube and that'll give us the resistance we need to maintain that back pressure and so the pump doesn't fail and then we can drain the tank. How awesome is that? There we have it. That's my little adapter to use on that T-fitting if I should ever want to flush the fuel line 
or drain the tank. Perfect. Here we go. Time to put the fuel back in the car and I'm gonna key on the ignition so I can also watch the gauge with the other camera and I'm just gonna announce, okay, one gallon, two gallons, three gallons. It'll take me about a half hour because I have to still take the fuel out of the old tank after I empty these out, but it should take you guys about 15 seconds here. <laughs> so this is a two gallon size jug. Obviously I have to eyeball one gallon at a time, but at least every two gallons, because I'll transfer to the two gallon jug, every two gallons will be accurate because it's obviously a full two gallon jug at a time. Here we go. One gallon, two gallons, three gallons, four gallons, five gallons, six gallons, Right, seven gallons, eight gallons, nine gallons, 10 gallons, almost there. All right, that's almost 11 gallons in total. All right, so we have like almost 11 gallons in the tank and that's almost halfway. So I have to go back through the footage myself and document where it was at one gallon, two gallons, three gallons, etc. for my reference. So I recommend doing the same. Now we get to test the pump for real. Now, last episode, we talked about a three-way switch that I put in my console. It's basically a toggle switch like this. Single pull, double throw. So there's three contacts on the back. Those three contacts, uh, the middle contact is the common, and that is wired to the, um, the pump relay. And then the, these two uh, connections, one is to um, keyed 12 volt, so when the switch is down, I can actually run the pump without turning the engine on for testing. That's what we're going to do today. And obviously the other one would be connected to your throttle body. And that's all the way up. The switch I have in my console is on, off in the middle, on when it's down. So normal operating uh, procedure is up all the time for me. So right now we're going to try testing the pump. And remember, I put in a fuel pressure gauge. So we're going to watch that too while I turn the pump on. Here we go. All right, fire in the hole. I hear it, it's building pressure, 60 PSI. I don't know if you guys can hear the whining. It's very, very faint. Um, compared to that last Holly pump I had, go check out the first video. It is super loud. This is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off. Now I'm gonna get under the car, check for leaks, all my connections, and especially where I welded. <laughs> Let's see if it's holding holding fuel. So uh, I'll be right back and we'll do a test drive. All right, it's that time. I'm actually anxious. I haven't driven the car in so long. Woo, okay, here we go. Fire this thing up. Normal operating mode for the switch. I can hear the pump, I hear the throttle body squirt. Yes. Okay, let's do this. The pump is so much quieter than the last one. I am so happy right now. Oh my God, awesome. Oh my gosh, I totally miss driving this car. I cannot believe how much fun I was having and I can't hear the pump, which is amazing. The last pump was a racket. You gotta check out that first video. It'll blow your mind how loud that Holly pump was. So, something to note. I just reviewed the footage of the gas cage as we're putting fuel in the tank. You notice it jumped like every two gallons. That's because the ascending unit doesn't react that fast. I was actually just calling out after every gallon, but keep in mind, after I filled two gallons, I was using the two gallon jug. So it took me a while to fill that two gallon jug again. That's why it looked like it jumped every two gallons. <laughs> anyway, well, at least I know how much gas is in the tank. And you, again, you can run it down to one gallon because there's a reservoir in that LS3 pump. 
and the corner pickups are hugging the bottom of the tank. It's not like a pickup tube, which is above the tank level. They're hugging the bottom. So that's really neat. And if you want more information, go to Rick's Tanks. They have a ton of information as, as well as Vaporworks. All the links are down below uh, because you can't just take one of those pumps and uh, drop it in. You have to modify that pump a little bit and Vaporworks has that kit. Uh, lastly, if you guys really want to see how I painted the corners where I welded in the patch panels, let me know. I actually did film it. I just didn't want to put it in this video. It seemed a little dry. So uh, if you really want to know, I can show you. Other than that, you guys subscribe if you haven't. Next week, we're going to do a Pontiac car show. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that, but I'm sure it'll be fun. So stick around, have fun, and you guys know the drill. Build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.